Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, August 31st. I am Shaka Sali. Today, we'll discuss the African Union and its position on the Libyan crisis. Embattled Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi has poured a great deal of investment and development money into sub-Saharan Africa during his more than four decades in power. But his legacy is more of turmoil than prosperity. Some say he will be most remembered for financing and supporting revolutions on the continent. VOA Mariana Diallo has more. For better or for worse, experts agree that Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's four-decade rule has had a lasting impact on sub-Saharan Africa. Herman Cohen, a former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, says there were a number of positive accomplishments. He spent a lot of money supporting Nelson Mandela and the African National Congress and uh, kept them going throughout the difficult years of apartheid. Another positive thing that Libya did was a lot of investments in African business, for example, hotels, uh, bus lines, uh, banks, and that sort of thing. But Daniel Server, a scholar at Johns Hopkins University, says much of Gaddafi's largest came with an agenda. Yes, he did extend the hand of friendship to sub-Saharan Africa, but that hand of friendship was a fistful of dollars for autocrats like him. Uh, it was not uh, a generous act, it was an act of buying support. Support for his dream of a United States of Africa, for example, which Soros says has not gone far. I don't see a lot of results from the unification of Africa. Suleiman Young, a professor of African studies at Howard University, says he believes Gaddafi's Pan-Africanism was sincere. He was traveling on the same path as Du Bois, Gavi, and Kwame Nkrumah, and all the Pan-Africanists. No, Gaddafi, on this side of the issue, is all right. Nevertheless, Young says Gaddafi's legacy in this regard will be mixed. At one level, the Pan-Africanists will say that he has spent more money in Africa than any other Arab leader, including NASA. Some Africans will like him for one reason, some Africans will hate him for the other. The other, says Ambassador Cohen, meaning the not-so-positive role Gaddafi played in some of Africa's internal conflicts. Between 1970 and 1986, he spent a lot of money trying to foment revolution. The biggest influence, negative, was in, in Liberia, where he sponsored Charles Taylor and that war that went on about seven years. And, Ambassador Cohen adds, that was not all. He actually sent uh, troops to occupy Chad, and, was, and he was kicked out by a number of, by some Chadian rebels uh, led by Hisan Habre when Habre was, uh, was a soldier. He influenced Burkina Faso. There was, he helped Thomas Sankara come to power and then helped Kampori get rid of Thomas Sankara. Gaddafi was chairman of the African Union from 2009 to 2010, but he lost his bid to stay for another year to President Bingu wa Mutarika. And during the recent Libyan unrest, he has also lost support from old allies. Though many African leaders remained silent on the issue, Senegalese President Abdoulaye Wad called for Gaddafi to step down while visiting the rebels' stronghold in Benghazi. Mariama Jalu, VOA News. Thanks, Mariama, for that interesting report. Um, now